Hi there and welcome to Transpona Trailer Sales. Today we'll be walking you through your 2024 RPOD 192-80. We're just going to start off at the back of the trailer here. If you notice right up top, you are pre-wired for an observation camera. If you'd like to get set up with that, our parts department can put together a quote to you. You just got to get into contact with them. We also have your hot water service port. Just opening this guy open, notice the sticker there. It does tell you that this can get hot whenever it is running. You got your reset button. I'm gonna go over a reset procedure once we get inside. The button I'll refer to is just right here. You got your pressure relief valve. So whenever you first get to your site, just hitting that relief valve. There should be a shot of water coming out of there, letting you know that the tank's full. We currently have the tank drained, ready for customer pickup. But as soon as you turn on your water pump, this would start filling it anyways. You got your inch and eighth drain bolt right down here in the bottom. And you're gonna notice a little power switch down here. That's just if you wanting to fire it up on electric. With it on off, when you hit the button inside, it's gonna fire on gas. If you were to turn this on, it would fire on electric, which is just a little element inside there. To get that snap back into place, you just have to cover in there, twist and turn it over, you get your spare tire, and then you do have your ladder so you can get up to your roof to check your seals. Screws in this back bumper cap. This is where you typically would store your sewer hose. We currently have a brand new one in the front compartment. It's the only reason it's not in here. They are about 15 feet long once fully extended. We just recommend keeping them in the back bumper after you use them. That way it keeps the smell out of the unit. You got a stabilizer jack in all four corners of the unit. We're just gonna hook the tool up to this drive nut here, which is just a three quarter inch socket, but we do include a tool inside the front compartment. Run this foot down to the ground. Once the foot's contacted the ground, just giving another eighth quarter turn just to snug it up and it's gonna take any bouncer sway you see we have in the unit right now away. You got your two low point drains. You got a hot and a cold line. If you're wanting to drain all the lines, that's where you would do so. It helps for keeping, uh, stopping water from going stale or stagnant, or if you're working on a faucet, it just helps with less water leaking inside. And then you got your main sewer outlet. The, your sewer hose is gonna have the same end as this guy here. You're just twisting this guy off. It has two ears. They just line up with those notches there. You just line them up, twist into place, and it locks in. You got your black and your gray tank. You're always gonna wanna empty your black tank first. It's gonna be your dirtiest water filled from the toilets. And then you can come behind that with that gray tank, which is typically a little cleaner water filled from your sinks and your showers. You got a cable satellite inlet. One thing I'll go over just on the other side of the trailer quick. On the other side of the trailer is going to be a black tank flush. The way that works is you do have to have the black tank open and your sewer connected for it to actually work properly. And if you don't, it does run the risk of bursting your tank. So just be mindful of that. You got a cable satellite inlet right here. Whenever your furnace is running, this will be putting out hot air. So just be mindful of that. And then you got your twist lock 30 amp connection. Just take a note of that notch there. It lines up with this notch in this bottom corner. Pushing that in, eighth turn to lock it down. And you got that threaded collar to really lock it down. If you follow that cord back, you do come to your standard 30 amp plug end. Most campsites should have this and you can plug right on in, but let's say you have the unit at home or your campsite only has 15 amp service. We do include a 15 amp park adapter. Just keep it in mind when you're going down to 15 amps power, it's really just to run your fridge and your lights. You can't run your air conditioner on it. It's just not enough power. And whenever you do plug in, there's two lights right at the top. The green light's gonna tell you you have a good power source. If the red light were to be on, it'd be telling you that you do have a bad power source. And so that would be where I'd be looking first. Taking a few steps ahead. You got your fresh water connection. So if you take that cap off, you can put a garden hose inside there and turn it on. And that's gonna fill your fresh tank. And that's what your water pump draws off of. Or if you're at site with service, run a garden hose into this guy here, the city water connection, turn it on. It's gonna pressurize all those lines without the need to run your water pump. And then right down below, you got your drain for your fresh tank. Just loosen that cap off. That's just gonna drain all the water inside your fresh tank. For your range hood inside, you got this little flap here. Whenever you get to your campsite, making sure that this flap's open so that you can evacuate those fumes. And whenever you're traveling, just snap it in into place. That way no excess dust gets inside the unit. And then inside this front compartment is just going to be some storage space. I'll go over some other stuff on the other side with you. Around the front of the unit, you're going to have your battery disconnect. With the battery disconnect in the position it is now, which is on, the batteries are connected to the unit. And if you were to turn that battery disconnect switch to off, the batteries become disconnected from the unit. The battery is just located inside this front uh, box here, you take the strap off and that cap would come right off. Then you get to your propane. 
you can just access everything you need to do just by loosening this tab off up top. You can flip this guy back, gives you access to that 20 pound propane tank. To change the propane tank, it is just as simple as taking this wing nut off. The cover would come off the bolt at that point and you'd be able to pull it right off. But you just gotta turn that counterclockwise and that opens up the flow of propane to the unit. Then you got your front tongue jack right up front. Underneath this rubber cap is a manual override in case your jack would ever stop working. There's a tool inside the front compartment and that allows it to operate it manually. You got your light up front to help with docking at night. And then got down and up. And on the left side, inside this compartment here, this is where you're gonna find it's just some stuff to go on the outside. So you got this nice table that just locks into this channel here. You slide it into place with this little leg down, and it'll give you a nice little table for working. You slide that off. You do get your mount for your griddle. You pull this guy right out. So you're just gonna take these, pull them up, and they'll turn out like so. See, it works the same way as your little table does. Latching that in there, and that goes down like that, and then you're ready for your griddle. You do gotta grab your protein cooking up clothes. You just take these silver feet and you've got slots on either side for those to slide into. And then just work that guy back. And then you got, of course, your little cotter pins so that you can lock it into place for safety. To get this to hook, it up, hook up to propane, it just works kind of like an airline. You do have to have the uh, flow of propane off for you to be able to operate that coupler that goes for both ends. But you'll just take this collar, pull it back like an airline and kind of assist the regulator as you push it into place. You don't have to assist the regulator, but I do recommend doing it just so in case you do push a little hard, it's not, you're not gonna break it. And then you come to this end and it's the same thing, flow propane off, pull that coupler back, push, and it locks into place. And then you can just open up your flow of propane, come to your griddle, you do have to prime a lot of air out of the propane lines if the propane's been off for a while. So if it doesn't work the first try after turning the propane on, on for, after a while, don't panic. You do just have to kind of let it prime and do its thing for a bit. But eventually, Now you start priming it. And there you go, you see. It does light up, but like I said, Sometimes it takes a while. It goes for the same thing on the inside one as well. And then to take it all down, it's obviously just the reverse process, but we won't show you that just to save some time. You do have a nice little exterior garden hose end. That works pretty simple. You just come over here, open this flap up. You got two notches on either side. It lines up with those notches on this side. You twist and lock that in and then you have cold water, spray over cold water. That black tank flush, which I was telling you about earlier. And then of course you got your, this is gonna be for your front tongue jack, the manual override. And then that tool, to then your jacks is this guy here. And then you do have a starter pack and that's where you're gonna find your sewer hose, as well as that 30, 30 amp, uh, 15 amp park adapter and just some other goodies to get inside. You're just taking that assist handle, pushing up fully at 90 degrees and it'll lock into place. It allows you to open up your door. One thing I'm gonna mention now, if you notice if you open the door all the way, which you do have to have open all the way to bring your stairs down. 
which also have adjustable feet. Just pushing those two tabs will allow them to slide up the stairs. You're gonna notice it blocks that awning arm. So whenever you're bringing the awning in or out, always making sure you have the door folded in enough to about 90 degrees so that you can run that for the boat. Hitting anything, once you step inside, you got your fire extinguisher right on your right. That's just like home, pull the pin and shoot. On the wall here, you're gonna have your interior light switch. You also have a porch light and an awning LED light that you can turn on from here as well. Pushing and holding that extend button while making sure your door is out of the way will allow that awning to start making its way out. Once fully extended, you're gonna see the back of the metal tube and the little flap hang down. One thing to keep in mind whenever you do have your awning out, just be mindful of the wind speeds. Whenever they start to pick up to about five kilometers an hour, you are gonna to wanna to make sure you bring that awning in, that way you don't run the risk of ripping your fabric or bending your arms. Now, if it were to start raining, you can take any arm, front or rear, and just pull down on it. It's gonna change the pitch of the awning head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better, because it's gonna allow for more shade underneath, you can do the same thing with the front arm. Just always making sure that you do push those arms back to straight before you bring in your awning. And to bring it in, it's just as simple as hitting that retract button. The awning's gonna start rolling in. And once that those arms contact the side of the trailer, the motor's just gonna cut out and you can let off the button. Right up top here, you do have a, your solar controller as well. It's, they call it a controller. It is really just a monitor panel system. You can go between your different, it's gonna tell you what volts you're at, the amps you're using and what you're charging at, and also your battery temperature. And now that that awning contact the side of the trailer, you hear the motors cut out, and that's when you know to let off the button. In the main kind of bedroom slash seating area, you can have it the way it is now, where it's a couch, or you can fold it down into a bed just by picking up the foot of this couch. It's gonna allow that couch to fold down. You take your travel latch, which is important with the latch whenever you're traveling, and you can fold this table down, which will allow that mattress to fold down. And then you do have a window right up front with a nice bug screen. You can open up the window and it is a fire exit. You're just having to go to the front here, obviously moving one of the screens out of the way. And you just take all these handles, pull them on out, and that will allow that window to pivot out. And then you have a knob in the top right and left hand corners just to tighten it back down so it can stay up. Uh, and then in the corner here, you're gonna notice you do have your in inverter. So it's gonna allow you to turn your battery power into usable 120 just with the battery you have on, you have to be mindful of that because it'll only last for so long. And you can just scroll between your different settings. It's gonna allow you to, what battery type you're using. And it's gonna just give you a bunch of different settings. To get that back up, you just lock that back in place. And then you can take your couch, to get the couch in, you do have to push it up and kind of fold it at the same time. You got another fire exit right here. That works pretty simple. You're just taking this red tab, pulling it. The whole screen's gonna pop out of the window. And then you can take your handle and push it on out of the unit. All the blinds in the unit do work the same way. They just kind of sit where you leave them. Turning this on does turn on some accent lights in both sides of the cupboard. And on both sides of the bed, you got USB and 120 plugins. On the wall here, you're gonna have your monitor panel system. You got all your tanks, so that's gonna tell you your battery level and as well as all your tank levels. And then you got your water heater switch. So if you turn that on, if you do are running it on gas, fault light's gonna come on. The water heater's gonna try lighting itself three times. And if on the third try it doesn't light, the fault light's gonna stay on. At that point, you do just have to turn this switch off, go hit that reset button I showed you earlier, and then try turning it back on. Because like I said, with the propane system, it does the air does have to be purged out of the system. Otherwise, it can take a few tries. And then you got your water pump switch, turning that on, draws out of the fresh tank. And then you got your main GFI plug. You got test on the bottom, reset up top. If you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, this would be the first place I'd check, just making sure it's not tripped. You got your sink with hot and cold water. Storage underneath, just be mindful of the drains and water lines. And then you got your range hood with a light and a fan. Whenever you are running this oven or stove, I do recommend running the fan just so you can evacuate those propane fumes.
And since we're on the topic of propane, since the stove and the furnace both run off propane, we've got an LP detector right here on the ground. If that guy ever starts going off, you are just gonna to wanna to turn off the main supply of propane at the front of the unit and just open up some windows to ventilate it out. You got your convection oven, which is pretty much just like home, not much I'm gonna show you there. To get the oven to light, it's pretty simple. You're just having to flip this glass cover up. Just be mindful that it is glass. Turn it over to high slash light and hit it with a lighter and it'll fire right on up. Some storage up top. And then you got your dinette area. This can turn into a bed. You're just having to take the two feet from underneath your tabletop out of, out of their sockets. Put the tabletop on these nice ledges here and then you can take your back cushions to fill in the center and you can have yourself another bed. Also located underneath these, this right here. It's just some storage space. You got your TV mounted on the wall. You're gonna notice right up top here where your cable satellite plug-in is. You got that little green light on. There's a black button, you can turn it on and off. It's just turning the antenna on on the roof whenever you do have it on. It's also gonna improve your radio frequency. Speaking of your radio frequency, you got zone one and zone two. Zone one is gonna be your interior speakers. Zone two is gonna be your exterior speakers. And then it pretty much just works like home. You got your Furion fridge, opening that up. You got your fridge and freezer. The controls are just right down here. If you're gonna notice all the way like this is that it's coldest setting. And then you do have this little writing here. It says off grid. That's for it to run on 12 volt. So if you don't have it in that off grid section, whenever you're traveling, the fridge isn't gonna be running. So just be mindful of that. Always making sure you turn that over whenever you're traveling. And then you got your charcoal filter. That's to help with odor inside the fridge. We do sell replacement ones. You can contact the parts department if you like to get any of those. Right down below, you got your main fuse and breaker panel. Popping that guy open. Whenever a breaker trips, it's gonna sit in the middle, so you do just have to turn it off and then back on again to reset it. And whenever you have a fuse blow, there'll be a little red indicator light letting you know which one's blown. This unit is equipped with a central vac system. You just have to slide that over, plug the tool in, <clears throat> and just hit that on switch and it turns on. It does all go into a bag, so just be mindful of that. And to get to that bag, you just have to stick your finger in there, pull, and open up, and it gives you access to that bag that's inside there, which should be hooked up. And then to get it back into place, it is just as simple as making sure everything is in its place. Pulling this back. And that'll pop back into place. You also have a nice, they call it a dustpanless system. So if you sweep everything in front of here, obviously it's mainly for gravel and dirt. You're not gonna wanna stick anything sharp or long in there because it will puncture the bag. Just open that guy up and it'll suck everything in. Your furnace, this is gonna be a main outlet for it right here. So it's gonna put all its air out of here. So if you'd like to get a fan just to try and move the air around a little bit, would be a good decision. You got a pantry on top of that, up on the roof. You got your air conditioner. You do have louvers, so you can adjust where the air is blowing out of. And then located inside these here, these snap out of place and they're just little air intake filters. Sometimes they do get dusty, so check in those every once in a while, just to make sure they're not plugged. Up on the cabinet here, you got your thermostat. So if you hit it once, it's just gonna illuminate itself. If you hit it again, it'll go into your mode. So you can either turn it on cool, heat, or cool and heat. So it'll, depending on what you set your thermostat to, that'll decide <clears throat> what kicks in. You got auto, so it becomes an on-demand system. So once the thermostat senses it's at temperature, it'll kick whatever's on off. You can either have that on high or low, or you can have high or low fan on full time. And in that case, it is gonna run the fan full time, no matter what the temperature is. And if you're wanting to run just the fan with no air conditioning or heating involved, you're just having to hit that button, go to your mode, go to off, and then fan, you would choose either high or low, whichever you desire, or just off again. And just at any point in time, if you're in cooler heat, turning this knob adjusts your, temp your room temperature. And then last but not least, getting inside the bathroom. If you pull these, two, these four screws out, it's gonna give you access to your water heater for winterization, as well as that water pump. You've got storage, you also have paper uh, toilet paper holder, 
we just leave that up to you so you can decide where you'd like to put it for mounting. You get your sink with hot and cold water, toilet flushes on the right, and then your shower has also cold and water and also has what's called like a, it's a water saving system. So with this turn the way it is now, the water comes out of here, but what its purpose is, is for waiting for hot water, you can turn this over like this and it's just gonna recycle that water back into the tank. And then once you get the water to the right temperature, you just turn that back to there like so. That's gonna be it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.